which I have recited just now in my last week's sermon in our last week's gathering I recited these very verses in which three personalities have been mentioned Ismail Idris and Dhul Kifr and I mentioned in our last week's gathering two personalities are very famous and they have been mentioned in the Quran in various places. Ismail alayhi salatu salam and Idris alayhi salatu salam. But about the third personality, the opinions of scholars differ. Some say he was a prophet of Allah because he has been mentioned along with two prophets. And some say, no, he wasn't a prophet, he was a saint, he was a righteous personality. <clears throat> and I was mentioning why he was given the title of the Dhul Kifal. Dhul Kifal was his title. Why he was given a, the title of the Dhul Kifal? What is the meaning of Dhul Kifal? I was mentioning that the Imam of Tafsir Ibn Jarir and the authority of Imam Mujahid reports that I mentioned in my last week's gathering that Yasar Israel Salaam wanted to appoint someone as his deputy while he is alive because Yasar Ali Salaam was very old and very weak. And he was a prophet. He's also mentioned in the Quran. So eventually, <coughs> Dhul Kifal, he he was chosen and he was selected as deputy of Hazrat Yasa on the basis of three things. Number one, that he was the one who fasted around the whole year. And he was the one who would stand in the prayer in the whole night. All of night, he would spend in the Tahajjud prayer. And the third quality was that he never used to lose his temper. No matter how people acted rudely towards him, <coughs> but he would never lose his temper. So he began his duties. He began to perform the duties. He began to act as a deputy of Hazrat Yasa Ali Salatu Salam. And Shaitan Iblis didn't like this. And I mentioned, he, he said to all his aides that I want you to go and spoil him and make him lose his temper so that he is proved before Yasa wrong. And they said, we, he's beyond our power. We cannot deal with this personality. You take over. So he said, leave it to me. I'll take care of him. So I was mentioning that when he started, because you know these personalities, they have a timetable for everything. Keep this in your mind. Today, you know, we in our daily life, we don't make any progress, in, even in our ibadat or in other things. Why? Because we don't have a timetable. You know, we just go and do it. 
when we read the biography of our pious and predecessors, we find one thing very common in them, and that is to have a timetable for everything. Walana Zakir Rahmatullah mentions about himself. You know, Zakir who wrote the Fazail Amal, and uh, he is uh, he is the one who was a Sheikh al uh, in Darul in the in the eighties. He was our teacher, and he's at the moment he's resting in in Jannatul Baqi. He was, he passed away in the month of Ramadan in Medina al Munawwara, and he is buried <coughs> in in Jannatul Baqi. So, <coughs> you know, he. Mona, sorry, I was saying, Mona Zakir Rahmatullahi, he was the, the one who wrote the, uh, um, the Fazal Amal, and he was my teacher. I haven't, I haven't seen him anyway. I was sorry, I just went to another, the Mona Islam al Haq, he was our teacher. He was Sheikh al Adis, who taught us Bukhari, and he's also buried in uh, Medina al Munawwara, Jannat al Baqi. Uh, Sheikh al Adis, Mona Zakir Rahmatullahi, you know, he says that I had time to do for everything, and, and he was an author, you know, he was an author of many books, he wrote many books. And he mentions once, it was my time for writing, and some visitors came. Some visitors came, and when the visitors came, and I was, and those visitors, the visitors was, were over all of us, and they were seniors. So he said, I was sitting, and because it was my time for writing, and not because the, the visitors were here and I was sitting with them and I started having headache because it was my time for writing and now you know all of a sudden the visitors came and you know I was missing what I was supposed to be doing so he said I you know I just uh, humbly asked you know the, my visitor the senior ulamas if you give me the permission I just go he said, fine, you can, by all means, you can go. He said, I just went to my room where I was, you know, where I would be doing the writing and everything. I just put the pen up and just wrote a few things, you know, a few lines, and then the headache just went. You know, these personalities, you know, if they would miss their you know, timing, you know, they would start, you know, if physically, they would, you know, they would feel the weakness or the pain. And so, so this was a secret behind their success, you know, timetable for everything. We don't have a timetable. This is the, this was the reason of their progress. They made progress in everything. And yet we, we don't have any timetables. You know, month of Ramadan comes, we don't have a timetable. We, you know, whenever we feel, we just pick the Quran up and we read it. When we, we don't feel, we don't read it. But those personalities, they have a time for the, for eating. They have a time, they have time for sleeping. They have time for writing. They have time for studying. They have time for, uh, uh, for visitors. You know, everything they had, you know, time. So I would just say, Hazrat, yes, uh, this Abdul uh, uh, Kifr had a time uh, to sleep, and he had a time for, uh, for for to sit in the court and to, to deal with the people cases. So he, it was his time to take a rest. And I mentioned last week's uh, gathering. You know, he, he used to take a nap in the uh, in the afternoon, a little nap, and this that's it. In 24 hours, he just used to sleep afternoon for a little while. That's it. And so while he was he was uh, he was going to his uh, room. Uh, uh, he, he locked the door and someone knocked on the door and he asked, he inquired who is there. So a voice came that I am an old tortured man, an oppressed man, suffering at the hands of his community and relatives. So he opened the door and he said, look, my relatives, you know, they're being very you know, cruel to me. So he mentioned the cruelty and this and that. And he prolonged the conversation and now there was no time left for Hazrat Zul Kifal to take his nap. And it was his, according to his timetable, it was in the you know, second phrase now to go to the court. So he said to him, look, you come to the court and I will make sure that you get the justice. He said, that's fine. So Hazrat Zul Kifal went to the court, he sat, and he, he waited for this old man to come so that he can deal with him. So he didn't come. So it was at night and Hazrat Yesa went to his room, he started in the prayer. The next morning, again, it was his time, according to his time table, he would be sitting in the court. He sat in the court, looking around for this old man to come, so he can, you know, deal with this case. But he didn't come. So when it was afternoon and he was his, it was his time to go to sleep, again, while he was just about to go to sleep and he would take a rest, somebody knocked on the door. And when he opened the door, he saw the very same man who came yesterday. He said, look, I, I told you to come to the court, uh, but you didn't come. 
Even today morning I was waiting for you, you didn't come. He said, well, look what happened. When he was sitting in the court, my relatives, you know, they said to me, look, we will give you back your due. And then you, that if the case goes into the court, then, you know, the, the, you will make the decision in my favor. So they said, well, let's, let's, you know, settle the matter out of the court. So when you left the court, the very, those people, they just went against their, you know, their, their promise, they broke the promise. So therefore I came to you. So he said, well, <clears throat> that's fine. Uh, so again here today, he, you know, the conversation, conversation continued, continued until there was no time left for Hadrat Dulkafa to take it up. Because he, he deliberately he was, you know, prolonging the talk. So he said, well, fine. Tomorrow, you come to the court and I make sure you get the justice. So he said, fine. So when uh, Hadrat Dulkafa went and sat in the court, again, he looked around to see if this is, you know, he waited for this old man to come. But he didn't come. So then, next morning, again, Hazrat Kifl went to the court, and again, he, he looked around, waited for him, he didn't come. So then, now, it was two days now, he didn't have sleep. So he went home, afternoon for the nap. He said to his family, look, today, don't let come anyone near the door. He said, fine. So when he, it was time for him to take a nap, rest, sleep, someone, came and the family members, they stopped him. They said, look, you can't go near the door now. Because just how, you know, Hazrat Kifin was very sleepy. He couldn't get sleep for the last two, two, two days. So what he did, they stopped him, this old man. What he did, he entered the house through the ventilator because it was a shaitan. <clears throat> so when he went inside, he started knocking on the door so hardly. Again, he woke up and he, he got up. And he saw, when he looked at him very carefully, he said, are you Iblis, the enemy of Allah? He said, yes, I am. He said, for the last two days, I was trying to make you angry and lose your temper, but I failed. But I, I failed. My, you know, all my plans, you know, have been shattered by you. You know, you, you didn't, you did not let my, any of my plan you know, go through and, and succeed. So they say, because of this, because of this, you know, for not losing his temper, he was given the title of Zul Kifr, which means the one who always keeps his covenant, who never breaks his promise, and the one who, who performs his duties very faithfully. For this very reason, he was given the, the title of Zul Kifr. Now the question is, some scholars that raise this, they raise this question, he was a saint, but why his name has been mentioned along with the Ambiya, with, 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 with the messengers, with the, with the prophets, what's the reason behind this? They say there are two possibilities. Number one, because of his, because of his uh, you know, virtuous deeds, you know, because in these three deeds, not losing the temper, no matter how one, you know, acts, you know, rudely to him or makes him angry, he would never lose his temper. Number two, because he used to stay awake all night. And number three, you know, he used to avoid, you know, fast through the whole year. Due to these three virtuous deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned him along with the messages. Just imagine, you know, these deeds, you know, fasting in, in our Sharia, it has been disliked to fast, you know, constantly every day. A Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, one of those three, <clears throat> when those three Sahaba Ikram, you know, one of them said, I will never, you know, I will never break my fast. I will always keep a fast every day. You know, I will never miss a day. Uh, every day, continually, I will, I will continuously, I will fast. The third, second one said, I will never marry. I will not get married. You know, I won't get married. So, and the, one, the third one said, you know, I will not sleep at night. Prophet said to them, look, you know, when he found out, he said, look, I sleep and I take a rest. I take a rest and also I pray at night as well. And I marry as well. And I fast and also I, I take, you know, I break a day as well. So, you know, this is our sunnah for, for, for us not to fast, you know, constantly. But anyhow, what we learn from this is, you know, these three virtuous deeds, 
Today, our Prophet in Hadith, he said, you know, the, the Hajjad Kriya has been the habit of all the pious people in the past. So in order to become close to Allah, you know, we need to, we need to stand the prayer at night, two raka, four rakahs minimum, or six rakahs, or eight rakahs maximum. And inshallah, through these, these, you know, these optional deeds, you know, we can become very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us sitting here as usually every week we have my uh, Zikr and Gushrif after the dust. And if you have time, please do join us. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa Malalihi wa Sahbihi wa Barik wa Salim. Rabbi Ghafir wa Rahman wa Takhayru Rahimin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fi akhirati hasanatum wa fina dhabanna. Allahumma Rabbana atubabal minna inna kunta sami alalim. Wa tubalina inna kunta tawabur rahimin. Wa sallallahu ta'ala la khayri khalkihi. Muhammad wa Malalihi wa Sahabihi